Right, in front of you, you can see a slightly disassembled Shimano Ultegra 6700 pedal. This is the axle and bearing arrangement. This is the body, the bit that you actually stand on. And this is the rear hinge, the bit that allows you to clip in and out of your pedals. And this is the axle that the hinge sits on. Now all these three parts go together to make up a pedal. Now all Shimano pedals platforms work in the same way. They have this front section, which your cleat goes into here, and then they've got the rear section here where the hinge part sits. It works in exactly the same way as a ski binding. So your cleat goes in there, you press down with your heel there, the hinge opens and then it closes around the back of the cleat. And when you wanna release, this hinge is, is sprung, it's spring-loaded. So you just need to overcome the tension of the spring by twisting your foot around and then it releases your foot, right? Now you can do that manually or you can have a massive crash. Either way, your foot's coming out. Let's just look at this then. This has got two parts. It's got the main machined body part, which is this bit, and it's got this plate here. Now this is a wear plate because obviously when you're riding, your foot's sort of sliding around a bit like that all the time. So they've made this replaceable. So when you do wear through it, you can just unscrew it, put a new one on, and there you go. Now, the first good thing about Shimano pedals is I don't know anyone who's ever worn through one of these, ever. I still haven't gone through mine, and I've done a fuckload of riding on them and hard as well. But if you somehow miraculously do manage to wear through one, all you do is you just unscrew it like this, and there you go, that's the plate. It's just a very thin bit of steel. Now let's start looking at this in a bit more detail. They've machined in the shape of the plate there, so you can put that in position. They've machined out a little bit here to save a little bit of weight. This whole area here is hollow, and that's where your axle goes in. That's where the axle assembly screws in. Looking at the back, this is where the hinge goes. This is the axle of the hinge. It just goes in like this. Now at this end, there's nothing, there's no thread. That's just a, a flat end, which sits into this hole here. Push it in, line it up, and that's in position. Now we'll explain how this hinge works later, but basically that just sits on there and moves back and forward around that axle. This is machined out of a single piece of aluminium. With the most recent Shimano pedals, this part's made of carbon. Um, but the shape is exactly the same, really, apart from, you know, some slight machining differences, and it works in the same way. Now, looking down into this, you can see that this is threaded inside. I'll explain later when I go into detail about the axle, exactly what these threads mean and what they do. Okay, next up is the axle assembly. First of all, let's just give a general overview of what, what it is. This part screws into your crank. This part is a plastic or nylon composite part. This thread is the one that screws into the pedal body and holds it all in place. The ball bearing part, the turning part, is, is this little bit here. This here is the locking mechanism and allows for adjustment of the preload of the bearings. This little part here is non-functional and actually is just something which allows for the axle assembly to be assembled properly. I'll show you that later, but this just shows the level of detail and engineering that's gone into this thing. This sits into the pedal body. This part is, is essentially press fit into the pedal body. So that stays in position and then the axle turns around like that. There's a row of ball bearings here and a row of ball bearings here. These are essentially angular contact bearings and the races are formed by the inside of this part and also machining on the axle and also this part of the locking mechanism. So looking at how they go together then, this part sits in to the pedal body like that and stops there. This line is what stops against this bit here. So that goes all the way in there. Now that means that the bearing arrangement is actually sitting here on the pedal body. It sits here. Now, if you look at the other side, that means that bearings are sitting about there. It attaches to your bike here and the bearings are sitting there, which is good engineering because if the bearings were sitting here, then it would be flexing like this and then this end would have no support. This is the optimum position for the bearings to sit. So let's go into some detail then about the axle. How is it put together? Okay, so first of all, we'll take off the end locking nut. You can see this part's threaded. This part, which is the other side of the locking nut, this side is flat. Inside here is the top of the angular contact bearing race. So when I undo this, the balls are gonna fall out. There we go. So you can see the top part of this nut is actually ramped, concaved, and forms the top of the angular contact bearing race. Now we've got one, two bearings there. There's 
10 more. So there are 12 ball bearings in total on this part. Next up, this here, which is essentially the outer race of the bearing and the part that presses into the pedal body. This has got a race here as well. Okay, and there are the other balls as well, another 12. So 24 balls in total and very small as well. Looking here, you can see this has got the race here. And then on the other side, there's also a race in there. These two parts are actually very interesting. They're not functional. These things exist purely so that anybody who's um, assembling the pedal can get the balls back in without them falling down into this chamber here and it being an absolute nightmare. So the first one is just pulls off like this. This is just a plastic sort of sleeve that goes over the top. And when you assemble your pedal, you sit this like this. This part sits just at the edge of this chamber to stop the balls going down. Maybe a little bit hard to see, but that's how it works. Here you can start to see the other side of the angular contact bearing race system. So that's the one side. Here is the other side. So the balls are actually running directly on the axle. This part, again, is just a little retainer that stops the balls falling down into here, which is very nice of Shimano to do that on, and just good engineering. We've got this large part here, which is made of a plastic nylon. I can't, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's a plastic of some sort. This is the part that screws into the pedal body, as we explained before. Now we can see the whole axle. This part is a rubber seal, just to stop dirt getting inside. And here we have the axle. As you can see, this is two different types of metal. I'm not sure what this is. It might be titanium. I could be wrong. Um, someone feel free to you know correct me on this or it might just be chromo that's been treated in some way. So this is a chromo axle, which is steel. This part is where the balls run. This thread takes the locking system. And then this has been machined away as much as possible to save weight, basically. Here is the thread that just screws into the crank and they've broached it with a six mil Allen key hole here. So that's how you get your pedal on and off, or you can use a traditional pedal spanner. Putting it back together then might make it a little bit clearer how this works. First, the rubber seal goes on. Then this part goes on. Then the little catcher for the balls goes on. Now here you can see that this part of the axle, the machining on the axle here, forms one side of the angular contact bearing race. This part here is not part of the bearing system, but it stops the balls falling down into the into this part as you assemble it. Imagine if this part didn't exist, this would be literally impossible to assemble, result in some major tantrums. So what you need to do is get all, all 12 balls sitting on this little part here, then we drop the middle part on. Okay, so the balls are in place now. Then we need to put this little stopper part on. You can't. Okay, there we go. That was pretty fiddly. Next, this part goes on, which has the top of the angular contact bearing system machined into it. So we screw that down and there we go. Right, so you should understand this a little bit better now. The last part then will be this locking nut, which goes on. Okay, now that is your full axle assembly with my greasy fingers. This part has the balls here and here. This part is essentially pressed into the pedal body. The assembly turns around on it. That's the axle system. This is far better than using cartridge bearings like a lot of the other pedal manufacturers do. If you use cartridge bearings, what they'll do is they'll just put one here and one here, and that doesn't allow for any preload adjustment. Cartridge bearings are not the best idea for pedals anyway. This angular contact bearing system here with a locking in system and a preload adjuster here is really, really good and extremely strong. And anybody who has Shimano pedals knows they just keep going for years and years and years and years and years. You never have to touch them. You never get play in them. They're absolutely perfect. And if they do for some miraculous reason, like if you weigh as much as an elephant or something, take them apart, clean it out, and then just adjust the preload with this little part here, screw this back on, and then you're good to go again for another 10, 20 years. This is incredibly good engineering, fantastic work. Now, this axle assembly is the same on the 105 pedals. Now, on the Dura Ace pedals, the bearing assembly is slightly different. I'll go into full detail in another video, but just to summarize, the Dura Ace 9000 bearing system has 
a bearing here. This is a needle roller here, and it has some loose bearings here, which sit freely in the bottom of the pedal body and the axle thrusts in, they act as the last part of the system, okay? There's not this locking nut system on the Dura-Ace 9000. Now, the, the Dura-Ace 9100 is different again. It's the same as the 9000, except they've taken out the needle roller. I haven't tested the 9100s. Nobody has, because they've only been out for a you know, few months. Uh, the jury's out on whether the bearing system will work in the 9100s, but if they were designed by the same guy who did this and who did the 9000s and has done the other ones, I can't see why they wouldn't work. Let's look at how it goes in to the pedal body. As we've explained, there's a thread just there, and that is where this part goes, okay? So this whole bearing arrangement is held into this body by this thread here. When you screw this in, it's very easy to start with, but as the axle moves deeper in, this part here meets its destination. Inside here, the hole is machined down into it, of course, but here, where this part sits, is slightly smaller in diameter. So this part is a press fit, okay? So what happens is, when you screw this in, there you go, it starts getting harder because what you're doing is you're pressing in that bearing arrangement into place in this slightly smaller diameter hole, okay? That's how the bearing is held in position. Now, trust Shimano, they've invented a tool to get this in. You just keep screwing it round, okay? That's basically in position. There's a little bit of gap there, but I'm not gonna torque it all the way. The preload is, is dealt with here inside, which is fantastic because that's about as far away from the outside world as you can get. So there's no chance of this getting knocked or any sort of contamination causing these threads to undo and then this thing develop play. The bearing arrangement is at the optimum position and that there's a, there's a rubber seal here. That is very far away from the bearing arrangement. So this will stop dirt. Even if any dirt gets in, it's unlikely that it's gonna get all the way down here. That'd be a hell of a journey. This means that the bearings are gonna stay essentially perfectly clean for their entire serviceable life, no matter what you ride it in which is another reason why these things are just excellently designed. So that's the bearing arrangement dealt with. It's just really great. And the more you play with it, the more you take it apart and, and sort of try and understand it, it's, it's really good. It's a work of art, it's really fantastic. Put the stand plate back on. That's the body and the axle explained. Um, as I say, this is the same on the Dura-Ace, this is the same on the 105s. There's, there's little variations to it, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. Okay, you can go on the Shimano website and look at the exploded diagram schematics of all these to really understand it if you wanna you know, spend a few hours of your life doing that. So this is the hinge. This actually comes in two parts and each part supports the other part in making the full mechanism work. So this is the outer shell of the mechanism. This part is where your cleat pushes on, it opens up and then snaps onto the back of your cleat. Here is where you adjust the tension of the spring so you can have it easy to get into or, or tight depending on what you like. The axle, goes through here, so the whole thing rotates like that. Here's the little uh, display at the back to tell you how your tension is set. This is the interesting bit. This is the spring system and the tension system. The axle goes all the way through the middle. There's one spring, two springs, okay? It's a left and right spring. This little bit here, the little metal piece, is the part that shows the tension. There you go, okay? So that red bit there is uh, designed well to be easy to see. And let's have a look at how this actually works. What happens when you screw this in? So here, you have the screwing system. So the easiest way to understand something is to take it apart. So let's get the first spring out. When you screw this part up and down, it wants to undo itself. It wants to move up and down. When it's in this outer shell, the outer shell prevents this bolt from moving up. So this part moves down. Now in here is a metal plate, okay? So when this part moves down, and this metal plate pushes down on this spring, which increases the tension of this spring. So the more you screw this down, the tighter this spring gets and the tighter the whole mechanism gets. I'll take it apart so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, as I take this out, you can see a little circlip here. Now you might be thinking, why is there a circlip in there? Obviously a circlip is, is essentially a spring which opens and closes. The circlip, in conjunction with the machining here, is what makes the ticking and clicking noise as you as you turn your tension. It gives you a an indexed tension and it allows you to fine tune. This is the circlip that makes the ticking noise and also acts as a base for this part to screw against. 
Obviously you can't screw against plastics, it will wear out. Now this bit has two elements. The metal part, which pushes down on the spring and gives the spring the tension, okay? And the red part, which is the indicator bit that you can see in the back of the mechanism here. This hinge system is, is very clever and uh, is exactly the same on all of the Shimano pedals. So the 105, Ultegra, Dura Ace is exactly the same. And when you put it all together, that is a Shimano SPD SL pedal. Now, in my opinion, these are the ultimate pedals. Whichever ones you get, the 105s, the Altegras, or the Dura Ace, they will last you forever. They will not break, okay? And they're entirely serviceable. They're excellent quality. The design is extremely well thought out and has actually been developed over years and years and years and years. I personally ride the 7900s. I do like to get the latest stuff all the time because I'm just like that, I like throwing money around at things. But with the 7900s, I literally have not wanted to or needed to. I've got it in my head now that I'm going to ride the 7900s until they break. And to be honest, I can't ever see them ever breaking. It's incredible work. If you compare something like, you know, look pedals, which have two cartridge bearings here and then develop play in them immediately, you know, fucking shit. These are so, so much better than every other pedal out there. And then of course, there's the whole fiasco of the pedal-based power meter system, which you're never gonna make something as strong as this if you've gotta get the electronics of a power system in, in there as well. And then you're gonna to have to rely on cartridge bearings as well, which are just not gonna work. As we've seen, they develop play in them immediately and they're shit. Hopefully, now I've taken them apart in front of you, you can see exactly how good the engineering is and also why I love them so much. So yeah, Shimano SPD SL pedals are the absolute best, the absolute best.